So my name is Brian Van Tyen, and I'm the uh, Sarcoma Program Director at Washington University in St. Louis, where uh, we have a large program looking at very rare tumors. And one of the limitations that's come out in the treatment of these rare tumors is that the frontline therapy goes back all the way to the 1970s with doxorubicin, and really hasn't changed very much. We thought for a brief period of time alertumab was going to be an active and useful drug, but the announced trial that was announced at ASCO was negative. Our frontline therapy hasn't changed, and it's actually, in a lot of patients, toxic. When pizopinib first came to market, we all began doing different things with pizopinib. One of the things we began doing was lowering the dose and then dose escalating. And then we found that this was a more tolerable med medication in a lot of people compared to doxorubicin. And so we formally tried to look at how we could do this in clinical trial with the patient population that we were afraid might not tolerate IV chemotherapy that well. And so we actually proposed and then have now been, and are now presenting a phase two clinical trial uh, using dose escalated pizopinib uh, as a frontline therapy for patients that we don't believe should be getting IV chemotherapy, which is either the debilitated or, say, the elderly. What we found in our study is that it made both the uh, progression-free survival and overall survival benchmarks that we had actually set out. And that we found that in the quality of life metrics that we were measuring, that pay, whether the patients were responders or non-responders, we didn't see a dramatic change in quality of life, uh, which is a good thing when you put somebody on a, a therapy. And so we were able to show that in a subset of patients, we were actually able to benefit them. Uh, and that group of fragile patients that we treat, uh, actually this is now an option. We have actually now, uh, I think this is the second study looking at say, uh, the elderly population. There's a study out of Europe looking at doxorubicin versus pizopinib had the same efficacy in the front line. And now we're looking at a more fragile population. Once again, pizopinib in the front line seems to benefit patients. So I think that the patients most likely to benefit from the treatment approach are the ones that want to try something but that you're afraid not to give IV chemotherapy. At the same time, we know which subtypes of sarcoma seems to be a little bit more likely to respond, like synovial sarcoma, uh, to pizopinib. And so you can try this in patients that uh, you may not uh, feel that comfortable giving more toxic chemotherapy to. Uh, but at the same time, those patients that want to try something. So I, I think what the data shows is that this therapy will be successful in about two out of five patients. And so if you're looking at resistance, the resistance front line versus any other line seems to be relatively the same. And so whether you use a front line or later line, I think it's equally efficacious at this point. And so therefore, you know, you can go forward with the idea that, you know, two out of five patients would benefit.